start, we want to make sure that the set point on the chiller for the water is at 18 degrees Celsius and there's a fan to provide extra cooling for the chiller. And then turn the power supply on. And it will take some time to warm up. This will also give status as a handheld controller. We'll be back when this warms up. After a minute or so, the system gives a warm-up indicator, and it will take some time to warm up, maybe 30 to 60 minutes, if my memory is correct. We'll be back when this warms up. Okay, and we're back just over an hour later, and the system was almost warmed up. So, there we are, we're at 100%, and the system is ready to go. Okay. Uh, for normal use during non alignment, suggested to keep a cover over the blazer. This can be easily removed and set to the side. So this laser starts with a CW green pump that then gets um, is aligned into the laser cavity which is under here. And the output is uh, coupled into a single mode fiber. Okay, now the cover is removed, and I will uh, remove the beam block that uh, blocks the pump going into the cavity. At this point, I want to Press and hold to turn the laser on. And now it will go up to the set point of 0.05 watts. You can go to info to see that the uh, diode currents are ramping up. Go to main and setup to open the shutter. Um, mode means that it will stabilize the laser power. Uh, mode for power means it will stabilize the laser power. And uh, now if we come back over here, even though the power is low, you can start to see some green light go through the cavity and then um, through the titanium sapphire crystal which is now glowing red. So while the power is low I'll trace out uh, the cavity. What we have here is uh, the input aperture. Okay, over here is the input aperture, and then there are some fold mirrors, which also act as polarizers, and um, here uh, the beam uh, goes off of this mirror, and so the cavity starts by entering over here, and goes to 
uh, this mirror, these two mirrors, which also act as uh, polarizers, and gets reflected off of this mirror before going onto this curved mirror, which focuses the green pump light into the uh, titanium sapphire crystal. Now, at this point, <clears throat> the pump light will go through the titanium sapphire crystal and then exit into this beam dump. Now the fluorescence of the light will um, go through the uh, crystal and uh, hit this uh, uh, spherical mirror here, which will then go through a filter and be uh, reflected off of the back reflector. And this is one of the mirrors that is tunable on the back side when the laser is closed. That is used for daily optimization of the output power. Now after the light is coupled off the back reflector, which forms the back edge of the cavity, then it uh, goes back through the system, back through the crystal, and then gets um, reflected off of this uh, curved mirror, which is reflective for the uh, near IR wavelengths and uh, transmissive for 532. And then the beam goes to the output coupler over here, which is also adjustable from the outside and um, can be used for daily optimization of the power, but it is suggested to start with the back reflector since the output coupler uh, fixes the output mode, which is perpendicular to the output coupler. Now, if this system ever becomes misaligned or needs to be t taken apart and re put back together on a different breadboard, um, then it's necessary to align the 532 pump so that it goes um, straight through the uh, optics and uh, then some fine-tuning adjustments can be made on the uh, curved spherical mirror uh, or the curved mirror for the green light which is here so the uh, green light excites the crystal and it fluoresces in all different directions but and the, uh, the output coupler and the back reflector define the cavity uh, for the laser. But, although there's fluorescence in all sorts of directions, the laser works most efficiently when the laser cavity is aligned with the uh, 532 beam. So, um, after lasing is achieved, upon uh, some initial alignment then it can be necessary to get uh, better efficiency to tra slowly translate the output coupler and the back reflector and mirrors so that the cavity mode aligns better with the 532. When the laser is aligned well to see it lays, uh, the threshold is about 2.5 watts. Um, I suggest uh, setting the pump power, the green power, to 4 watts for uh, daily alignment so that there is sufficient uh, red light coming out when it's aligned, and then you can um, compare the day-to-day -day power values with those before knowing that you're always putting in the same pump out. Okay, if we come over here, we see that the uh, uh, crystal is fluorescing much more. And you can actually see the green beam traverse itself through the cavity. And if we uh, put a card after the output coupler, we can see There's a bit of a, uh, a laser spot here. 
Okay, now it can be helpful to uh, set up the uh, power meter after the single mode fiber or um, directly before the laser if you're doing initial setup. So here we have the power meter on the screen. Um, now often it's good to adjust the output cup or the sorry the uh, high reflector the back reflector um, to match its mode that it's reflecting back to the output coupler which is right there centered in the camera uh, the output coupler adjusts the output mode so if you're coupling the single mode fiber it will be very sensitive as to the coupling uh, now it's just an iterative appro approach to um, maximize the power coupled into fiber or um, couple just out of the laser in general um, between the high output coupler and the high reflector uh, the goal to get the maximum amount of power is to uh, match the cavity mode to the uh, green light that is pumping the tie sapphire crystal now often with some optimization can get about um, 400 milliwatts or so coupled into single mode fiber with of uh, of set of 800 uh, with a four watt green pump. Now when you're done for the day or for the moment, you can um, get shutter close and then hit laser off or hit the laser power uh, button once and the uh, laser will go off uh, now it's on standby and so the system is still uh, powered up it's ready but the dials are off and so if you tap and hold the power button it will uh, turn on uh, rather quickly. The diodes just need to ramp up the current. Now what, after you've got the uh, laser aligned, then uh, what you want to do is to push this uh, safety shutter close. And when you put the top back on, it will automatically open and um, then uh, the laser will operate with the cover on, which should provide better uh, stability. And then additionally, you want to put the uh, uh, pieces of cardboard back over top of this box to provide uh, further stability. Uh, with the system uh, well lined in the single mode fiber, at four watts of pump power, you can usually get about 180, anywhere between 160 and um, 220 milliwatts of light. Um, it, the system can take some time to warm up and settle, so it can be good to give it some time to warm up and then. Uh, finalize some tweaking of the, fi of the uh, cavity and the fiber and uh, after that after the system is warmed up then um, it is easier to have a stable output above uh, 200 milliwatts and I should be clear that this uh, 200 milliwatts is coupled into a single mode fiber after a 50-50 fiber beam splitter. So the actual output power coupled in the fibers is more like um, 400 milliwatts. Guys, start here and then go into setup. Down here, change the RS232. Pull these two for like five seconds. Come back here and you can get into SP power, SP current. Those are the menus you, you couldn't get into. Gotcha. And then if you go into current, 
you hit this button and then you can bring each one of these to their factory maximum currents. Mm -hmm. and normally a 10 watt laser would do about 12 and a half to 13 watts. Gotcha. Now, so, so now is that it, curious that those are very different or is no, that not? No, they uh, started that way. The only way that would have changed because they start that and they move together that way. So as you change power up and down.